All evil acts are motivated by the drive to preservation, or more exactly, by the individual's intention of procuring pleasure and avoiding displeasure. So motivated, however, they are not evil. Procuring pain as such does not exist, except in the brains of philosophers. Neither does procuring pleasure as such, pity in the Schopenhauerian sense. In conditions obtaining before the existence of the state, we kill the creature, be it ape or man, that seeks to deprive us of a fruit of the tree if we happen to be hungry and are making for the tree ourselves. As we would still do to the animals even now if we were traveling in inhospitable regions. The evil acts at which we are now most indignant rest on the error that he who perpetrates them against us possesses free will, that is to say, that he could have chosen not to cause us this harm. And it is this belief in choice that engenders hatred, revengefulness, deceitfulness, all the degrading our imagination undergoes, while we are far less censorious towards an animal because we regard it as unaccountable. To do injury not from the drive to preservation, but as requital, as the consequence of a mistaken judgment and therefore likewise innocent. In conditions obtaining before the existence of the state, the individual can act harshly and cruelly for the purpose of frightening other creatures, to secure his existence through such fear-inspiring tests of his power. Thus does the man of violence, of power, the original founder of states, act when he subjugates the weaker. His right to do so is the same as the state now relegates to itself, or rather there exists no right that can prevent this from happening. The ground for any kind of morality can then be prepared only when a greater individual or a collective individuality, for example society, the state, subjugates all other individuals that is to say, draws them out of their isolation and orders them within a collective. Morality is preceded by compulsion. Indeed, it is for a time itself still compulsion, to which one accommodates oneself for the avoidance of what one regards as unpleasurable. Later, it becomes custom. Later still, voluntary obedience. Finally, almost instinct. Then, like all that has for a long time become habitual and natural, it is associated with pleasure, and is now called virtue.